There's lots of misinformation about radon out there. Some folks believe that radon is only a problem in old homes. Some people think it's only a problem in homes with basements. The reality is that radon can be a problem in any home. Any home that's in touch with the ground, basically, uh, can have a radon problem. Brett Sherry is Oregon's radon coordinator, so we thought he'd be the guy to ask the most obvious question. What is radon? Radon is a naturally occurring radioactive gas. It's formed by the natural breakdown of uranium in soil. The only step along that whole way uh, that the solid particles become a gas is when it actually becomes radon. So essentially, radon is the gas that's created in uranium's natural decay process. And though you can't see it, or smell it, or feel it, it's there. In the soil, in the air, and even in the water. And in some parts of Oregon and Washington, radon concentrations are known to be quite high. According to Brett Sherry, that's reason for concern. Radon is the second leading cause of lung cancer, second only to cigarette smoking. It's actually the, the leading cause of lung cancer in non-smokers. The Environmental Protection Agency estimates that about 21,000 Americans develop lung cancer each year due to radon exposure. Radon's health threat comes from the alpha radiation it emits. Alpha particles are relatively large by nuclear standards, too large to penetrate walls or even skin. The problem comes when radon gas is inhaled. You inhale it and as an unstable nucleus, it, it kicks out parts of itself. In the case of radon, it kicks out an alpha particle. And those little alpha particles, they travel with a lot of energy and they can hit cells, damages the DNA, and damaged DNA can then modify how a cell works and transform it into something that's malignant. Dr. Mark Defebach is a lung specialist at Oregon Health and Science University. Probably 90% of lung cancers are smoking related, but still 10% of folks have never ever smoked, come down with lung cancer. So this is really a very advanced lung cancer. Here's the uh, tumor itself where the cancer originated and the air passage to the right lung is almost completely blocked off. This is not a curable situation. Lung cancer is a devastating disease whether you smoked or didn't smoke. It's the biggest killer by a big margin and even lung deaths from lung cancer in never smokers would still be one of the leading cancer killers. To find out why we have radon in our area, we went to a geologist, Scott Burns. This is quartzite, and when you have quartzite in the deposit, it means that it was deposited out of the Columbia River, either by the Missoula floods or just by normal river activity over the last 28 million years. The Columbia River originates up in British Columbia where there's lots of granite and therefore has a high amount of uranium and thorium in the sediments and those are the elements that are going to produce radon. Scott got involved with studying radon in the early 90s. There were certain areas in the Portland area that were very, very high in radon, and other areas that were very low in radon. The Oregon Health Division came to me and said, Scott, why do we have some areas that are high, some are low? All of this data happened to be recorded in zip codes. The high zip code areas were all Missoula flood sediments, and the coarse grain Missoula flood sediments. The Missoula floods were a series of catastrophic floods that swept across Washington and down the Columbia and into the Willamette Valley at the end of the last ice age. These floods, along with other ancient flows, carried countless acres of radon generating debris into the region. So to have radon, you have to have two things. You have to have number one, uh, generator. You gotta have uranium and thorium in the sediments Secondly, you've got to have permeable soils, that is, holes that transmit the gases and the gases can move through, with gravels and cobbles as opposed to the, the silts, the very, very tight ones. This area up here with all the cobbles, big pieces that you, you see like that, that is typical of what you have underneath, especially Alameda Ridge or Mill Plain. On both the Oregon and the Washington sides, the mighty Missoula floods define the landscape. Two prominent features are Alameda Ridge and Mill Plain.
as the Great Missoula floods came into the Portland area, they hit two volcanoes, one being Rocky Butte in Portland and the other being Prune Hill in Washington, and you get a gigantic pendant bar of sediment formed in back of it. Primarily gravels and cobbles, large debris, highly permeable, and those are our highest areas of radon in both of the particular communities. So the green areas are actually Missoula flood deposits. This little wedge-shaped green area here is pretty much northeast Portland. The radon levels that are above four picocuries per liter are in red. Given this link between geology and radon, it seems like it would be easy to just look at a map and tell if your home has radon or not. But Brett Sherry says, not so fast. The maps can be kind of tricky. If your neighbor has a radon problem, there's no guarantee that you have a radon problem. Uh, and it can be either way. You might be the only house on the block that has a radon problem. It's important for everyone to test their home. The only way to know if you have a radon problem is to test for it. Home test kits are available at hardware stores or online for between $10 and $30. There's typically two different types of radon tests. They're broken down into short-term or long-term. Short-term tests run from at least 48 hours up to 90 days. Long-term tests run from 91 days up to a year. The best time to test for radon is during the winter months when you have the heat running. If you do a long-term test, which is at least three months, you'd like at least a portion of that to be during the, the heating months. To get a better sense of radon levels in the metro area, Scott Burns helped us test two Portland homes. We placed the first test into a home in Irvington, a neighborhood near the Willamette River, built mainly on tightly packed silts and clays. For the best results, Scott recommended a long-term test. The location for the detector is critical. A place that will be out of the way, very little air current coming in, and then put it down just like that, uh, and then come back in three months, pick it up, uh, put it in the envelope, send it back into the test laboratory. For comparison, Scott placed a second radon test into a home located on Alameda Ridge, an area known for loose Missoula flood sediments and high radon values. Well, in this basement, first of all, we have a door over here. A lot of exchange of air going back and forth, so we want to be away from that. And Again, avoiding areas here, with drafts or air movement, the... like doors, windows, dryers, or furnaces. This would be an absolutely perfect place here because it's away from where people might disturb it for three months. And so let's put it up here. At the end of three this months, time. the homeowners filled out the data cards and sent their test kits back to the lab. The results were surprising. The house located on Alameda Ridge had a radon value of 11, well above the EPA's action level of four picocuries per liter. The Alameda Ridge house has Missoula flood sediments, and so I expected that one to be high. But the house in Irvington tested over 23 picocuries, more than twice as high. I'm very surprised by the 23 because other houses that we've tested down in that area have generally been much lower and, and many times below the four picocuries per liter, mainly because the soils down there are less permeable. To me, what it tells me is every house needs to be tested because you never know. Radon is a geological hazard, but the good news in it is that it is a geological hazard that can be taken care of fairly cheaply. Steve Tucker is a radon mitigator and installs systems to reduce radon in existing homes. Steve's work starts with an inspection of the property. He looks for cracks or gaps in the foundation and gets a sense of the house's floor plan. Then, he sketches a plan for a system to reduce the amount of radon that enters the house. One of the most common terms you hear in radon mitigation work is depressurization. Atmospheric pressure is typically lower than soil gas pressure. So since radon comes from soil, it wants to be pulled to the lower air pressure, which is in the atmosphere above. You plunk a building down on top of that, and buildings by nature have lower air pressure inside of them. A simplistic way to put it is, is a building or a house acts like a giant vacuum cleaner. The problem can get even worse when the house has been weatherized. Because less air can move through the house, this can allow radon gas to build up inside the structure. The key to radon mitigation is to flip that pressure difference. You want to create a greater negative under the building than what's inside of it. It starts with installing a pipe that reaches from below the basement slab 
all the way through the house and out the roof. A fan is then installed in the attic to pull the radon gas from the soil surrounding the house, effectively reversing the pressure gradient. The house then repels radon away from the structure. In this house, the entire installation, from filling foundation cracks to routing the exhaust pipe through the house, through the attic, and out the roof, to mounting the fan in the attic, takes one day and costs in the neighborhood of $1,700. Steve now sets up radon monitors to see if the system is working. Six months after this mitigation, the interior radon levels of the house went from 23 to just above one picocurie per liter. But addressing the problem on a statewide level will take time. The red areas on this map are indicating zip codes where we have at least 30 or more radon test results. There are a lot of zip codes in this area. This is the Portland metro area here. But there's a huge part of the state where we don't have a lot of information. Brett's particularly concerned about eastern Oregon. The underlying geology in that area uh, has a lot of granite material, which tends to have higher concentrations of uranium in it, which could result in radon issues. High radon levels have also been recorded in Washougal, Hood River, and parts of Salem. By 2011, both Oregon and Washington had adopted regional legislation requiring all new residential construction to include passive radon resistance systems. The regulations for radon in public buildings have yet to be implemented. And according to Steve Tucker, coming up with the code standards will take time. Public structures are far more diverse in the nature of their construction and use than residential buildings. It's a much harder task to come up with standards for such a diverse group of buildings. How serious is the problem? We really don't know in the big picture. We've known about this radioactive gas since like 1904, 1905. But we never knew that it was a health hazard until 1984. And so this whole health science thing has developed since that period of time. For now, the Oregon State Health Authority's policy is better safe than sorry. It's a good point to bring up that there's really no healthy exposure to radon. The lower your exposure, the lower your risk.